Section 1.3 limits at infinity and behavior of a function. Um, and so now what we want to do is we want to start looking at functions, not what's happening on a small scale, very close to a finite value, but rather we want to take a look at what happens as we let x go to infinity and negative infinity. Limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. So big idea here, um, if we let this x go to negative infinity, that number is getting really, really, really close to zero um, from the negative side. So we're going to be less than zero going to zero. Um, whereas here, we are going to be positive, so we are going to be coming down to zero from above. And the way to look at that is we want to follow the curve and head out, and we are heading towards the y value of zero. And as we follow here, we're heading towards the y value of zero, one from below and one from above. Okay? So keep in mind, as we follow the curve, we want to see what's happening to those y values. All right, so informally, what we're going to be talking about really is horizontal asymptotes. And what I'm hoping is you see the connection between what we did in pre-calc compared to what we're doing now. And so in pre-calc, we talk about horizontal asymptotes, and we say, well, graphs can't cross an asymptote. Well, you can on a small scale, but what a horizontal asymptote really is is the limit of some function as x increases without bounds. And so what we did in pre-calc was we said, hey, I'll get rid of everything except the largest exponent and those coefficients. We're going to do the same thing here. So in pre-calc, we might have done something like 4x squared over x squared minus 2x. And what we did was we had rules for those. And that's what we used for evaluating our horizontal asymptotes. So we say, hey, this doesn't really matter on the, on the scale of infinity. So what we needed to look at only was the 4x squared over x squared. And we said, oh, hey, look, then that would go to 4. That would be our horizontal asymptote. It's the same idea here, only now we're calling it limits. All right, so if you look at figure 1 and 2, you see y is a horizontal asymptote. Um, note on the aside over here, the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. This would be like x to the 0 over x to the 1. Notice the degree is larger on bottom. It's the first degree, whereas on the top it is to the 0 degree or doesn't exist. So this would follow the rule that if the bottom is larger, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be 0. In this case, if the, if the denominator has a larger degree, then you're going to have a limit at zero. Okay? All right. In the figures below, so here we are. We're taking a look at the inverse tangent graph, which we hopefully remember is a tangent graph that's going to be reflected about the y equals x line. And so as we go to infinity here, we're going to approach pi over 2. And as we go to negative infinity, we're going to approach negative pi over 2. Okay, those are the bounds. Remembering that the original parent tangent function goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Remember the parent function. And tying in with our inverses from chapter 0, the domain and range change. So where your domain here was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, this that was your domain has become your range right here. Okay, so the domain and the range have switched. Here, we're looking at another set function, y equals 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. These are known values. We're just going to accept them as given. And so we will say that the limit here is e. Later on, we'll be doing some work with these functions, and you'll be able to prove that using some of your other methods. Okay, so just accept this right now as a given. Okay, given. Blue boxes, definitions, and givens. Just take them as is. Okay, so some limit laws. Um, and keep in mind here, when we look at these, we want to make sure that we recognize them as laws and rules that we're going to follow to make 
solving problems later more simple. Okay? Um, this just says that if a function has a limit, that's what this says, if it has a limit, then the function to the nth degree is going to be the same as the limit to the nth degree. Okay? And that's going to work for both positive and negative infinity. If I multiply some function by a constant, for example, okay, and say, hey, what's the limit of that function as x goes to infinity? Then it's going to be infinity. Infinity times any constant. It's going to be the same. All right? If there is a limit, rather than infinity, because infinity is really not a limit, but let's say there was a limit, then you're just going to take k times that limit. Okay? So this would be like a KL if you had a finite value. This K constant can be moved inside as well. So here it's inside, here it's on the outside. Okay, it is not going to affect. You're just going to take K times the limit. Uh, if you have a horizontal line, that is also your limit, and that works for both positive and negative infinity. So Y equals 7, there's your limit. There's your horizontal asymptote. There's your graph, right? It's never going to deviate from y equals 7. Okay, so if all the other rules are true, then we have certain rules that we want to follow. And so using the ideas from the last formulas, keep in mind, these numbers here refer to the formulas on the previous page. So I'm going to scroll back for a second. 1, 2, 9, and 10. These boxes here, represent those 1, 2, 9, and 10, okay? So all of these blue boxes are numbered. For example, this is 5 and 6, 5 and 6, okay? So when we're looking at these in your book, this is 7 and 8, okay? So when you're looking at these, they are all going to have numbers in your book. And this is telling you to look at 1, 2, 9, and 10 of the blue boxes and to put some information together, that's all we're doing here, okay? We're not doing it, it's given in the book. And it says, hey, if that's true, then using this, you can get another identity, okay? So this says something to the half power. Remember what the limit of that was, right? It was E, so then you're going to get, keep in mind, these are the same. That's the same as the substitution, U and U, X and X, 2X and 2X, 5X and 5X. So you're going to get e to the 1 half, because this inside had a limit of e, and therefore you're going to get e to the 1 half. Okay? These are proofs. I wouldn't necessarily worry about the details here, but they're just showing you how the limit rules work. All right, so limits at infinity. Again, blue boxes, infinite limits. So informally, we want to see what's happening. If it's going to infinity, up and up and up and up to infinity, that's the same thing as saying that the limit does not exist, right? Because there's no finite value that that function is going to approach. The AP board has said that saying infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist is equivalent statements. So we can let that go. Um, keep in mind that if you said they both went to positive infinity, left and right limits, then you could say, hey, the limit is infinity. And that's fine as well. Okay, so givens. All right, x to the n as x goes to infinity. n has to be some number. And this ties in really, really well to your Algebra 2 standards, right? Odd functions go in opposite directions. Odd is opposite. Even is the same. So they're both pointing up, correct? So as I approach negative infinity, positive infinity, those are both increasing. Okay? This is not anything that needs to be memorized. This is an Algebra 2 review. Okay? Again, we're talking about the exponent. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're looking for patterns, right? 5 would look like this, 6 like this, 7 like this, 8 like this. Okay? So, even exponents, the end behavior is equal. Even ends are equal. All right, so let's do some examples, and these are given in the book, and it says, hey, let's take a look at this. Um, the limit as x 
goes to infinity. We're taking a look at this one right here. Um, so we're looking for shortcuts. We want to keep it simple. And so what we want to do is say, hey, first thing we notice, it's got an odd exponent. Odd exponent means the behavior is going to be in opposite corner. So either there and there or there and there. So it's going to look like that or it's going to look like that. Okay. The second thing we take a look at is we take a look at that, the coefficient. In this case, the coefficient is positive. So we know, hey, this is the one we're talking about. So this is a good example of 2x to the fifth. And so what happens is I follow this to positive infinity, the y value is going to positive infinity. Okay? As I follow this curve to negative infinity, it's pointing down towards negative infinity. Check. Okay? That's all it's saying. So now, on the second example, the first thing we want to look at is the exponent. It's an even exponent. Okay, even exponent, which means the ends are doing the same thing. The second thing we want to look at is the coefficient. Here, the coefficient is negative. Negative means we're going to point down. And since they're both doing the same thing, we note that as x increases in the both positive and negative areas, so do the y values, both increasing in the negative direction. Okay? All right, example six. Again, here are the answers. So we're not really doing anything here. We're simply reinforcing what we should have known from algebra two. This is a huge little polynomial here. And I can plug that into my graphing calculator and see where all the humps are if I'd like. I don't need to. The only thing I need to worry about is the largest exponent. In this case, it's odd. Odd is opposite. The leading coefficient is positive, which tells me it's going to go like this. And since I'm looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity, negative is down. Okay? So we want to use our shortcuts, use the previous knowledge that we have, and simplify things. So what you're going to notice here is all we're going to take a look at is the largest degree. In this case, it's even but our leading coefficient is negative. Same because of this. Down because of the negative 4. And then it's clearly pointing down to negative infinity. Okay? So, example 7. Now, this is a rational expression. You want to find the limit as x goes towards a positive infinity. Okay? So we're looking at reviewing horizontal asymptotes from Algebra 2 and pre-calc. Okay, so that says that we only need to look at the leading coefficients of the largest degreed terms. In this case, we can simplify this whole thing to be looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x over 6x. And we want to reduce the fraction It's going to approach one half. Okay? It's going to approach one half. Example number eight. We want to find the limits of these A and B. Go ahead and pause now and attempt these on your own. All right. So, what we have here is the first one, A, says 4x squared over 2x cubed. And so what we want to do is go straight for the leading coefficients and the largest degree. That's what we're focused on. So we're really going to simplify this to be looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x squared over 2x cubed. And we can reduce this. And we can get rid of that and that. And so what we end up with is we're looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2 over x. Since the degree on the bottom is larger than the degree on the top, first degree on bottom, there's nothing on top, we know that this is going to go to 0. 
and I'm going to be approaching zero from below it. That's all it means, okay? Nope. Example two. Again, this one's written on top in standard form. On bottom, it is not written in standard form. So we want to take a look at that. So for example, B, we're taking a look at looking at the limit as x goes to positive infinity of 5x cubed over negative 3x. So we want to simplify if possible. And I can get rid of an x and an x. So I'm looking at the limit as x approaches infinity, positive infinity, of 5x squared over negative 3. This would be rule number two from Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. It says that the degree on the top is larger, so this is going to go to infinity. However, there's a minus sign here. So since the coefficient is negative, we're looking at a quadratic. Even exponent means they're both pointing the same way. Negative 5 thirds, they're both pointing down. I get negative infinity. Okay, these are a little more difficult and only a little because they look uglier. So take a moment now, pause the tape, and see what you get. Okay, in part A, we're going to be taking a look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity. Again, when I'm looking at infinity, I'm only concerned with the leading coefficients of the largest degree. So I really want to look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity of the square root of x squared over 3x. Okay, well the square root of x squared is pretty close to x. So what I really want to look at is the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 3x, which simplifies nicely to one-third, okay? Simplifies nicely to one-third. Now, when I take a look at b, again, I'm looking at the largest degree and the leading exponent. I want to take a look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the square root of x squared over 3x, which can fairly simply be written like this, x over 3x. And even though I'm approaching negative infinity, it's not going to pose a problem because these x's are going to go away. So imagine if I said, imagine, thinking bubble, imagine if I said, OK, I'm going to plug in negative 10. It's not even close to negative infinity, but negative 10 over negative 10 times 3. Those are still going to cancel out. The minus sign is going to become irrelevant when they're of equal degree. So the answer here is still 1 third. Okay? If on any of these simplifications you have any questions, please note that in your notes and be prepared to ask questions tomorrow in class. All right, example 11. Again, pause your tape and attempt these on your own. So we're going to take a look at these now. And we don't have a rational, but we do have an x to the sixth function and an x to the third function. Um, and nicely, your book has provided us with a graph here. And so I'm going to take a look at the picture here, and I'm just going to go, oh, hey, look. If I follow the graph, it approaches this number, which is about 0. So I'm guessing right now that this is 0. That's going to be my limit. I want to come over here now, and I want to look at this picture, and I want to make sure that I can prove that algebraically. So at ginormous numbers, the 5 is irrelevant. So this is really equal to the square root of x to the 6th minus x cubed. Well, this is x to the third times x to the third, which is really just x to the third. And x to the third minus x to the third is equal to zero. So if I'm looking at this the entire time as x goes to infinity, 
I'm still going to get the same answer. It's zero. Okay. Option number two, here B, example B, it says x to the fifth plus x to the third minus x to the third. And so now we have this situation where we are looking at something and we say, well, let's see what the picture looks like. And so we're only looking at x is greater than zero. And we're going to have a domain restriction here, right? Because inside here, we're going to need to make sure that that is always greater than or equal to zero. So the reason we're getting this domain is because we're saying x to the third times x to the third plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Or x to the third has to be greater than or equal to 5, which means negative, my bad, negative 5. Um, just doing some algebra there, the cube root, cube root of negative 5. And so we're OK. Our x to the 0 is going to work there quite nicely. And so we say, OK, well, we're good. And so that's how we get this, greater than or equal to 0. OK, that being said, what we want to do is we want to come over here and we say, OK, well, what's going to happen is we go to positive infinity of this function. And what you notice happening here is you end up with this ratio of 5 halves. And you say, well, how do we get that? We should be able to get that using some algebra. And the dilemma here is, again, with your calculator, we'll get into the more intense strategies in another section. For now, using your graphing utility, you will see that function approach um, 5 halves using some of those algebraic principles that we're going to talk about later. Okay, so for now we're going to go ahead and use graphing approach on this. Okay. All right, in behavior of trigonometric or exponential and logarithmic functions. Okay, so certain things that we know to be true, it's really helpful if we can actually remember what our parent functions are. So an exponential function with a with a whole number coefficient and with a fractional coefficient. Okay, so increasing and decreasing functions. And so you can see one's climbing to infinity and one is decreasing to zero. Okay, as we look at this, the exponential increasing to infinity, this is going to zero, right? What was our domain becomes our range. Remembering also that exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses, okay? inverses. So what was our domain becomes our range. What was our domain is going to become our range, right? So that's where we're going to be headed. You are now going to complete the following quick check exercises, which are not always so quick, okay? This is on page 96 in your book. The answers are on page 100 in your book. And what I'm hoping you're going to do regardless of which class you're in, is that you will go back into your notes and anything that you see that you don't understand, you didn't get, or you don't know where it came from, please, please, please make a note to yourself in your notes so that when we're giving class time tomorrow to go over the notes, you have questions to ask for clarification. Okay? Good luck.